if you listen to uh, there's there's a video online um, of pain leaders in a neurology who were teaching 15 years ago that we should um, be much more liberal with comforting people in chronic pain not cancer pain and the teaching was there were several teachings which all turned out to be false and not based on any evidence at all one teaching was that um, there's no ceiling on opioid dose that you could just keep raising the dose and nobody would get into trouble the second teaching was that if you develop tolerance which everyone does on opioids the way to treat tolerance is to keep increasing the dose um, and the third teaching which was completely false is that it's there the opioids are way less addicting than we used to think and the the, uh, the that people were saying that um, uh, the addiction rate was less than one percent um, in fact the doctors that work with drug companies and they started to say things like and even coined a new term pseudo addiction the person might look addicted but actually they just need more opioids these false teachings also were associated with a lobbying effort at the state levels in more than 20 states that passed laws and guidelines at the medical board levels to again help to liberalize the use of opioids to destigmatize the use but the language in those laws because you know most healthcare delivery is regulated at the state level the federal government does not regulate most health care it's regulated at the state level so these lobbying efforts were smart they knew that if they changed state laws or state uh, guidelines it would be very hard to reverse that so a lot of the language that was passed in more than 20 states it was called model language um, embodied these uh, false pre pretexts um, so the false pretext related to there's no ceiling on dose and, and the way to treat tolerance is to keep increasing the dose was like the language in Washington state was no doctor shall be sanctioned for any amount of opioid written so you could be handing out bags of opioids and there's no way the medical board in that state if that guy lawyered up would be able to do anything about that and that is what's happened so if you fast forward from all of that stuff that happened in the late uh, 1990s it only took two or three years for the doses and the amounts of opioids that were being used for chronic pain to skyrocket. We have curves that we published from Washington Workers' Compensation. The average daily dose in 19, say, the mid-90s was around, if for, for workers that were on powerful opioids, like Schedule II opioids, the uh, average daily dose was around 80 milligrams a day, which is actually quite high. It went up to over 140 milligrams a day within two or three years. More than a 50% increase in dose um, just within a few years. And the first part of the story has to do with recognizing what happened, identifying the causes, and um, understanding that it was primarily overprescription, not misuse and abuse that was causing the problem. And so the next phase of the story really um, came down to working with experts in the field in our state, um, along with all the state agencies, to try to do something about it.